Hello, everyone, and welcome to the special edition of, well, it's not really the Bear and Cheryl show. Um, it's more of a one-off talking about Boxing Day because I had an inspiration as it is Boxing Day. And I thought I would say, hey, I wonder if there are people who wonder what Boxing Day is. Yeah. So, um, maybe I'll create a new, uh, a new video series, Ask a Canadian. We'll maybe do that. I kind of love that idea. So I think I'm going to do that. Ask a Canadian. So in our first edition of Ask a Canadian, um, I'm going to talk about what Boxing Day is. So Boxing Day is a day off for people in Canada and other parts of the British Commonwealth. Um, you're like, what is the British Commonwealth, you say? Well, the British Commonwealth is the Commonwealth of nations that are part of England. Now, don't let people tell you that that does not happen because we are literally a constitutional monarchy right now. It is in our constitution. Um, so the queen was our queen for all those years. God bless her and everyone. Right, so that's kind of the truth of the matter. And we enjoy being part of the Commonwealth. Not everybody does, but we sure do. But to give you some ideas of some of the other countries that are part of the Commonwealth, Australia, New Zealand, they are also part of Commonwealth, of course. England and Britain itself has definitely created the Commonwealth, so they're part about it. They, I think Scotland as well. Maybe Ireland. Um, but as well, other places like Africa, even though it's a continent, it's part of the Commonwealth. So, and for example, there's something called the Commonwealth Games, which is like the Olympics, but for people who, just people who go to the Commonwealth and belong to the Commonwealth. There's quite a few countries. I believe it's 50-ish now. I'm not sure. I have to look it up again, but several countries that call England their home. So I wanted to share with you this amazing experience known as Boxing Day. It is a very fun day. You know, you have Christmas, which is very powerful, very big, um, often religious holiday, not always for everyone, but very powerful sacred day. And everyone gets all these presents and often goes to church and, and everything like that. And then the next day, Boxing Day, is where people go and actually see if there's any good deals. Right? So sometimes they will return the things <laughs> that they didn't like um, and get new things. And sometimes they would just buy new things because the sales are amazing. No, there are better sales on Boxing Day than there is on Black Friday. Like, extraordinary sales. So a lot of times people wait all year to buy something at Boxing Day because it will be cheaper. You know, things like iPads, iPhones, computers, even cars. Like, these big ticket items, you can buy them. TVs, they're all, like, slashed. The prices are much, much cheaper. And usually Boxing Day morning does have the best deals. But the stores are often open earlier. And people will wait up half the night to get in line. Because that's as big a deal as it is. So that's something that is super fun across Canada and other places as well. But you might be saying to yourself, Cheryl, when did Boxing Day originate? Well, that is a good question. Um, it actually comes from the British sort of aristocracy. And if you guys remember, for example, Downton Abbey is a very good example of some place that would celebrate Boxing Day. So back in the day, or oh, even up to maybe the mid, you know, 20th century, early 20th century, um, they would have these giant um, wealthy estates and castles. And they would be, you know, granted from, you know, either by the king or the queen to people or more likely be passed down, you know, as the other people get older, the people who um, inhabited and had the titles and then their children would, uh, you know, own it. Usually the, usually the heir apparent, so usually a, a boy, but if there weren't any boys, then the girls would, obviously. And then they would have all these servants because they would need people to run a house that big. 
right? If you could imagine sort of what society was like in the very wealthy, they had to have parties, they had to have events. So they, the aristocracy did not run those things themselves. And it was very much the court, if you know what I mean, in the sense that they had, they were expected to put on a certain amount of um, prestigious events, right, which they needed to know how to do. So being a servant in these kind of houses was actually a noble enough profession because you, you know, if you were good at it, you were very well thought of, you know. And, of course, there were people who didn't have as much um, abilities to do things, the, the lower servants and things like that. But still, it was considered an honorable thing to do, and there were whole families that went into service, as they called it. Um, and you can well imagine that Christmas Day was a very busy day for the wealthy people because they would have parties, they would go to parties, they would host events, they would often do a lot of charity work as well. So they would have dues and banquets and everything. And who put on those banquets? But the servants, the servants were the ones that put the banquets on. So obviously they didn't get Christmas Day off, even though the majority of people did, even in, you know, A Christmas Carol, one of my favorite of all time books and movies. If you remember the scene where Bob Cratchit is asking for the day off and then um, Scrooge is kind of, you know, a jerk about it. Really, in reality, he gets the day off and Scrooge knows he gets the day off, but he's just being difficult. Even back then, in Victorian times, people would get the day off, right? So it's not like he, he didn't get the day off. It's just they had to do this sort of scene every, every Christmas. <laughs> so, um, so clearly people knew that, obviously, but their servants didn't get the day off. So that's what happened the next day. Boxing Day was the day when the servants would get the day off, when they would get their Christian, their Christmas, right? They would be able to do things. So they would often get things that like presents or they would get the rest, the leftover food because, of course, there was plenty of food left and it was all the best quality. So they would get food to eat. They would often get the day off. They wouldn't have to serve. And in some houses even, the... Um, the actual ladies and lords would serve the servants, believe it or not. That did happen in some ways, kind of a giving back kind of thing to the people that helped them so often. So that's kind of the origins of it. So it's considered a very happy day. And then sometimes the servants would travel and meet other people or go, because of course these homes were not near anything, right? So they might not see their parents if they're young or their kids for a long time and they were allowed to go and visit and they would bring these boxes of food and things with them. So it also became a visiting day, a day when people would visit with their relatives and things like that that they hadn't been able to do previously. So that is the first edition of Ask a Canadian, um, Boxing Day. So if you have any more questions or you want to know anything, just put it in the chat. I'm planning to do on some more of these, okay? Happy Boxing Day, everybody!